Well, thanks everybody for being uh, here. This is my buddy Jake. Uh, we dedicated the game today to Jake. Uh, it's been a tough road. You want to talk about perseverance and toughness and a guy that's uh, an amazing inspiration to all of us. So Jake shot it from the south side. Jake's a special guy and uh, a great friend of our families and uh, we dedicated the game to him today and you got the game ball, huh, buddy? Yeah, it was pretty cool in there singing a fight song with Jake. So I wanted to make sure Jake finished things off today by sitting next to me. So you're going to have to answer a bunch of really tough questions, okay? I'm just joking. Right, so, uh, you know, great team win. Uh, you know, really pleased with the way that our defense was able to keep them off the board. Um, you know, especially the way their output was for three game, or two of the or four games. Where they put a lot of points up and they put yards on everybody. But uh, defensively, thought we played pretty well. Uh, great job with the turnovers. And then same thing from the kicking game. Outside of a couple of cover reps on the kickoff team, I, I thought that uh, our guys played uh, you know pretty darn well in, in the kicking game. So I was very pleased. Very very. Uh, uh, very pleased with that. From the standpoint of where we're at, you know, obviously to get a win is great. I think I saw some improvement in some areas and a lot of room for improvement in others. And uh, that'll continue to be our focus as we move forward as uh, we get ready for Big Ten play here in a week against an, an outstanding football team. And that's what we have to just continue to do is accelerate the growth of this team in all three phases. And, uh, you know, I think the last six practices have helped, uh, but we're far from where we need to be. A couple things, 2018 class being here today was awesome to see the freshmen. Uh, we're going to be back here in a few weeks, and uh, all the students will be here, so look forward to having fun with that. And then uh, along with having fun with Jake today and a special day, uh, it's also my son's Ryan's birthday. So, Ryan, happy birthday. So with that, how about some thought-provoking questions? Mm -hmm. um, you touched on it a little bit, but uh, do you think the special teams played at a pretty high level today? One, and two, that block kick at the end of the first half. Do you see that as kind of a momentum turn? Because if they hit that, yeah, well, I, I don't know if it was as much of a, of a momentum turn, per se, as much as great effort by our defense. Um, you know, we, we gave up some things there, and, and uh, you know, go down and, and get the block was terrific. We talked about pitching the ball. We practiced that, and uh, Chi-Chi pitched it to their offensive lineman instead of the outside Matthew Harris that would have probably gone up the sideline. So we got a lot of work to do there. So that's why stats are for losers, Paul. That counts as a fumble against our football team off a block. Yeah, so I got a T-shirt, Paul's face on it, and we would like one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and I probably shouldn't ask about Western Illinois out gaining you. Um, stats are for losers, but when you look at your passing game now, it, it doesn't seem to be anywhere where it needs to be. Is, is Trevor healthy? Can you talk about the passing game. Yeah, I think yeah, I think Trevor is pretty close to being healthy. We're fifteen, what fifteen to twenty-five. Very yeah, one hundred and seventy. Something like that. Uh, um, you know, I saw I think one overthrow on Danny. Uh, and then one that was up the sideline that I thought we had a guy open and, and we sailed a little bit. Um, but, you know, we, we've been a different wide receiver unit it almost seems like every week uh, since about midway through camp. And I just don't think, and we don't think collectively that there's enough trust and enough continuity and chemistry right now with that group. Uh, with the, that group and then with Trevor. And that's the, a lot of things that we've been working in practice. So obviously we're not there yet. But those guys were, I, I thought the drops were down. I thought the, the effort level was better. And I think there's some room, obviously, uh, that we feel good about. But at the same time, um, there's a ton of room for improvement. Three or 14 on third down, not good enough. Uh, and a lot of those pass plays were on, on third down. So that's both defenses were really good. And we were going into the game, second best third down offense in the, in the conference. So you know, here we go. Obviously, got to fix that. Can you just talk about how the uh the running game picked up the offense today, particularly uh, Jackson and, uh, and Paul. Yeah, you know, I think uh, all three of our guys that ran the ball ran the ball pretty well today, pretty well with authority. Um, you know, I think the two young guys are very talented, talented football players uh, that are continuing to learn and grow in, in the offense and in the way to play. And then they start class here on Tuesday, so now everything changes uh, this week for them. Uh, but but at the same time, I think uh, you know all three guys that carried the ball today did some did some good things. Uh, but we've got to be stronger and better at the point of attack if we want to run the ball consistently in the Big Ten. You guys lined a lot of guys up on the line a couple of times and uh, did, didn't work all that well running the ball. Do you think that the linemen you've recruited can pound the ball or can, can allow you to run the ball like that? And, I mean, do you think we'll keep seeing more of that? Uh, not going to answer the last part, uh, but the first part, I don't know without watching the tape. I mean, I think our guys can, can do everything we ask them to do. That's why we recruited them. We wouldn't ask them to do something that we don't think they can. Generally speaking, obviously, I mean, we'll answer specifically. Is, is there more of an effort to get Miles Shula the ball in, in different spots on the field? Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, he's a talented player, can do a lot of things. Um, you know, I, I thought for the most part today there were a couple of schematic things that we thought we might have based on the way that their defense was going to play. I think we're going to look at the tape and we're going to see that there was a block away from there being massive explosive plays when he had the ball in his hands, and that's things that we got to coach with. <clears throat> question spits one, is this team good enough to win Big Ten games? Yeah, absolutely. No question. What makes you say that? We won a football game. And, you know, as I look at our league, I think it still comes down to the 60 minutes that you play each game. It has nothing to do with any games you've played in the past. So, you know, quite frankly, I'm not going to get mad at you, but I'm a little insulted by the question. Really? Yeah. Well, this is an FCS opponent. I mean, we won 24 to 7, and I believe our team can win every football game that they play. And I'm not saying I'm mad at you, I'm okay. just saying that from a question standpoint, I, I think we can win every game that we play. I really do. Do Are we playing at an incredibly high level? No, not necessarily. Uh, but we won a football game. I believe we can continue to win. And uh, que oh, just, just to follow up, two guys who stood out here today, Odenabo and Grigel. Can you talk about them? Yeah, I thought Fani played well. I thought he was active, um, especially in the passing game. You know, he's got a lot of work to do in the run game, being more stronger at the point of attack. Um, but uh, from a standpoint of uh, Grigel, I, I thought he did a nice job outside of the one punt, the one he got a little high on, the one that was kind of end over end. He got a little high up on his, uh, on his basically his foot, almost his shin. But I thought he responded really well. Pretty big win today, too. I thought he handled it pretty well. Just a follow up on the Do you think this, do you think we're going to see more of him? Obviously, at a regular game day, you think we'll see more of him than one? Well, we've had him on the field on almost every third down situation, and today he was able to play pretty well. You know, so I, I hope so. I think he's a very dynamic guy. And we've just got to continue to coach him and be consistent. Was that, did you take that first drive of your pass against the defense on pass defense? You know, I've, I haven't watched a tape. I mean, I think we've moved the ball a bunch. Um, you know, I'm not ready. It's never as good as you think and never as bad as you think. It's typically the way things end up week one round. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think from a, from a standpoint of there were some really good things offensively today, and then there were some, again, bad news bears plays by our offense, right? So we're far from being where we need to be. Um, a couple questions about the running game. First of all, is it tough for you to trust two true freshmen, or do you think these guys – well, I mean, we ran the ball 41 times, you know, so I think we trust them pretty well. I yeah. mean, and, and they had 21 and, and six carries, so, you know, 27 of the, of the 40 couple runs were, were on those guys' shoulders. Uh, yeah, we've got great trust in them, but, you know, I don't know. Um, as a freshman, you're learning and growing. We want to make sure we bring them along at a pace that's fair to them and we don't put too much on them. Uh, but I think they've handled everything we've thrown at them, and we'll, they'll continue to have more and more added to their play. And so should we expect... Justin Jackson to keep getting a huge portion of the carries, or is that going to be kind of game by game? Um, we'll be back here on next Saturday for Andy State College. There were a lot of passes uh, short of the sticks on third down. Are those checkdowns from Trevor, or are those designed? I mean, that that is his number one target. No, it's there. Check down. Check down. Yep. Since uh, Colin Ellis appeared to be Texas for Team Tucker in the fourth quarter, um, do you have an update on him? I'll give you that tomorrow. Or what's that? Monday. He was joking in the locker room. So. Uh, sorry, I had a great question that I think I didn't have time. <laughs> uh, Coach, given the amount of passing yards given up, uh, any concern facing Christian Hackenberg next week? It has nothing to do with the yards we gave up today. Yeah, great concern. <laughs> I mean, it, it is zero. I mean, they've got a different passing attack. You know, we, we knew what we were going to see today. We are going to see a lot of dinks and dunks. That's what we saw the whole game. We were more than willing to let them dink and dunk the ball all day long. Um, I thought the way our DBs played on the double moves, I, I think I charted four, but it might have been five. And we gave up one completion that was contested on a double move. We were more focused on those than we were necessarily on, on uh, being upset off a hitch and maybe the guy missed, we missed a tackle and they get four or five yards. We didn't think they would be able to run the ball consistently against us, and that's what they want to do. Um, and, and I thought the plan was solid there. And then I thought keeping the ball inside and in front, uh, pass game wise. But, you know, we've obviously got to. Look at what Penn State does schematically, uh, and, and try to try to do things to, to disrupt Christian. I think he's, if not the best in our league, and if not the best in the country, he's in the conversation. He's a terrific football player, and um, I only had a chance to see him play a little bit um, uh, from the standpoint of that game. He played against Central Florida, and then a little bit last week. And uh, he's a very very talented player. And what I was impressed with what I saw last week was, you know, he took some shots, he took some hits, and he kept on playing. He's a great player. It's, it looked like. When guys were committing penalties, they were coming off the field for at least a play. Were we seeing that right? And was that a concerted effort to, to 
Yeah, I mean, we got we got to eliminate those types of things. Um, you know, I think we ended up with five for 35. Um, I think it was one on the one on the defense of being undisciplined and offsides. That's unacceptable. And then, you know, the other ones we, we just can't have. I mean, you can't have a, a false start penalty third and one at the one. You know, you can't fumble the ball and not throw the ball away when points are on the board after a block punt. I mean, a lot of things. I mean, we're we're far from where we need to be. And uh, Ibrahim Campbell, um, it looked like he got pulled on the fourth down on the touchdown. So I thought maybe he was being benched, but he's actually injured. Was yeah, he went, yeah, he, he's got a little body injury. We hope to have him back next week. But uh, I, I don't know if I'd say he got fooled. I'd say that was one heck of a scheme. They did a nice job uh, with a naked off of uh, fly action. They, that had typically been what they had done, but they did it off of a different formation uh, that, that put a lot of stress on, on our defense in that play. And you got to give them credit for uh, – Nice little tweak to their scheme and a nice job throwing it uh, over in the flat. Donovan obviously played a lot more today than you know he was, he was planning on it. How do you think he, he did filling in the third quarter? Right? We gave up seven points, so we'll take that. You know, we'll take that. Uh, you know, I think there was a point in the game uh, where I grabbed the, the back seven <clears throat> on the sideline, excuse me, and uh, I asked Galvin how many games he had ever played safety before. He told everybody none. You know, so. <laughs> Great. Uh, let's. I got. I got. A, I got a good idea. Let's be decisive. Then whatever we call, we call. We play. Let's not try to get too crazy. Talking about the the penalties, and obviously you guys focused a lot on mistakes in, in the past couple of weeks. Is there a point where you think it, it discourages aggression for a guy if he's thinking, oh, like I'm going to be fooled if I make a mistake? Does that discourage some things that, I mean, aggressive plays could make up for some of these mistakes? You know, I, I didn't major in psychology. Um, <laughs> To answer your question, so I really don't care. They need to play well. They need to play consistent. We need to coach them to play well. We need to coach them to play consistent. So if you're worried about me, you got a problem. Play play football. Period. I've played this and been around this game for a long time. You can psychoanalyze and psychobabbleize everything. If we were went on the east side, we should have wore purple uniforms. If the sun would have been different, it would have. I mean, I'm not even going to begin to go that way. My size 12 is going where the sun doesn't shine with this team for the rest of the year, and it's not going to end until we get where we need to be. We're not there yet. We're far from being there, but I, I could care less. If guys are worried about us demanding that they're best, then we got a major problem. Did um, the cool moment after the game, uh, you had a bunch of a bunch of kids in your youth group all jerseys run down to you and you invited them to the locker room for the time. Yeah, yeah it's great. I think it was the Evans and uh, Junior Wild kids. I think that were here, and uh, it's great to see those guys. A lot of our players go and help those guys, uh, those coaches and young people out. And uh, uh, see our players right away, especially Chance Carter. You know, being an Evanstonian, I'd go over and have some fun with those kids. It was really cool. They got a chance to go and sing a fight song. So they look good in purple. We'll continue to look good in purple. Let's do well in school. Coach, uh, Nick Andrew struggled the first two games of the season a little bit. But, um, uh, you played a lot better today. Can you talk a little bit about what the difference was today and how important that is moving forward? Yeah, I, I thought Nick was uh, really good all you know last uh, week, week and a half in practice. And... Um, you know, we've been really challenging him a lot in practice, and I think he responded well. Jake, do you want to answer that question? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I looked there. Quick, Jake, how old are you, bud? Eight. Eight years old. Yeah, absolutely. You and Tommy Jack had to play a fight play for the entire game. Did that come through or not, Daddy? So that's why I can stand in the wing and watch him out. Yes. Good. Good. Chris, do you have another question or just hold the mic? Any more questions for Coach? Nobody else wanted it. Do you have Jake's last name for us? Or? Yeah, Jake. Yeah, Jake. We'll get. We'll get it all taken care of once we're done. Okay. Thanks a lot. Right, thanks, thanks, Coach. Thank you guys. Thank you.